you talk about uh, your responsibilities and get through this cover four defense and kind of different from what you did with the Rams? Oh, it's pretty much similar, just different terminology. Cover four is cover four, landmarks is landmarks. So it's just getting the uh, termin terminology and the communication with some of the guys here down pat, but it's pretty much the same. Coach Gruden, uh, on the first day we got here, and, and I think you even said in the offseason that we're going to make LaMarcus Joyner is going to have a special project, and it's going to be uh, number 13, <laughs> teaching him the ropes and then you know, showing him how to slot guys get covered. What's that dynamic been like, and what have you your impressions of Renfro? It's been awesome. We've been counting the reps. Yeah. I mean, he came up to me today, well, um, the other day, and was like, we two and one. And he was winning, and I was like, I hate to break it to you, you ain't catching no more balls. So it's, it's been going great. It's been friendly competition. I mean, he's here because he's a great route runner. He's very small, smart and intelligent, and he's going to get me ready for Sunday, and I'm going to get him ready for Sunday. And we've been competing that way. Does he look like you? Like a, I mean, everybody, everybody makes fun of the way he looks, but does he look like a guy that can step in and produce in the NFL? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like Coach Gruden said, and I feel the same thing. If, if you can beat me, then you can beat any nickel in this league. And he's been getting it done, and I've been competing with him, and he's going to be Sunday ready when it's time to go. You were talking about his sort of ability to get open. What makes him an effective route How is he able to get open? Understanding leverage. Just understanding how to get a receiver to fear that he's going vertical or going out and able to stop on a dime and come back in real quick. He's a very uh, prestigious route runner, and I think that's his game. That first day, he... Uh... He seemed to get a couple of catches on you. He, like he broke a jam there, and he seemed to shake you on one of the, one of the routes. But then it seems like since then you've kind of tightened up. Was there what is this a situation where you're like, okay, and you kind of got got the hang of the way that he plays, or what was that? What happened there? I think it was on um, Coach Gruden and Coach Oli teasing me. They came over and say, hey. <laughs> We told you to help mentor the guy, not get your butt kicked. I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow your roll. I was like, hey, you just, you just opened up a can of worms there. So it's been competition. Like my mindset with him been Sunday, game on the line. It's third down, game on the line. So I, I have to approach that with him because he's a very great route runner. This is a lot of what he does. Is, uh, he thinks anyway is instinctive. You know that he just has a knack for for, for being able to get open. Is playing defense sometimes the same way? Obviously, you need to know your scheme, but especially when you're in the slot, you have to kind of have an instinct on where things are going to go. I'm a whole believer in this. There's no ability advantage in the league. Everybody is equal. I mean, he can go out there and tear me up. I can go out there and tear him up. So with him being instinctive, I have to know what routes are coming, what route tree can he possibly run. Because if I go out there and try to cover Renfro just one-on-one, -on -one, like a chicken with my head off covering the whole route tree, I have no chance. So three by one, two by two, I have to understand what kind of routes are coming and kind of take my chances from there. Maybe it's because you're playing well at the NFL level at quarterback and CFP, but it seems like every young guy that takes the podium says, Joyner's telling me something or he's mentoring me in this way. You're only 28 years old, right? But it seems like you're kind of mentoring the, the entire secondary. What's, what's that role like? I mean, I, I just love the guys here. They just, they, they recognize my, my accomplishments as a good football player. I mean, I don't look at myself as anything great. I'm still trying to become great, but I have seen and I know a lot. And my biggest goal while I'm here is, you know, pour out myself for the guys around me so we can be a great defense. Selfless, all about my guys. Uh -huh. How eager are you looking forward to uh, next Tuesday, Wednesday when the Rams come here? Uh, I mean, that's just another practice to us. I really? mean, that's just another way for us to get to Monday night, you know, that opener. We just, one day at a time, one practice at a time. That's going to be great competition. I mean, it's not a game. So, I mean, it's nothing to look, really look forward to other than to get more work and to get that competitive adrenaline rush while another team walk up into here. So, that's all it is. There's been a lot of focus for you on the slot. It, but you've done so much safety work in your past that feel like, all right, the scheme is in my mind. If, if I were to go back there in a pinch, do you think you could do that? Or would you want to get some reps in there somewhere this summer? I mean, it's something I've been doing all my life. So yeah. it's almost like Renfro say, that's something that's instinctual. Uh -huh. I mean, I can, if you need me at free safety, I played it all my life. I played it in the NFL at a high level, and I can go do it here. 
But you know, Jonathan Abram and Carl Joseph have to get their reps so they can be great. Because right. those are going to be two great young safeties. So I'm just here to know my role and just be the best I can at that and help the guys around me. Does the slot in this scheme occasionally still have safety like responsibilities? Oh still? yeah, it does. Coach Gunther does a really good job with moving the um, nickel back around at safety, outside, inside. So it's going to be a special year for the secondary. We, we just haven't shown it yet. We're just going through the bases, but it's going to be a lot of fun for the secondary. For the first two years of his career, Gary Ann Conley has had very little to do in training camp. He's been hurt, and he hasn't been able to you know, play the way he wanted to. And then last year, when the season started, he got to be one of the better cover corners in the league by analytics anyway. What do you see from him now that he's practicing every day and what kind of corner, how good can he be? I mean, from, from what I heard, uh, and for what I see now that I'm witnessing, it's, it's the spirit. It's all about the spirit. I mean, guys are having great vibes around here and it's keeping Gary Young going. I mean, obviously, hands down, he might be the most talented DB we have. And if you add that work ethic and the spirit that he has, the positivity that he's coming to work with every day, we got something special on the outside. So we just have to keep him going. Yeah, Gruden says he's always trying to look under his hood on him. Because <laughs> he's you know, laid back, doesn't right, say a right. lot. Doesn't, you know. He's coming out that shell, though, and I love it. I love it. He's dancing around. He's joking around. Carl Joseph's the same way. Positive energy, man. We're going to be a special DB, to, DB unit this year. A couple more, guys. On Tuesday, when Antonio Brown had his most extensive practice of, the, of camp so far, there was only one DB who was able to actually keep up with him and knock a ball down, and that was you. Can you, uh, can you run through exactly what happened on that, uh, on that play? I mean, Antonio Brown is one of those guys. It's like Sunday. Every, every, every rep against him and Renfro for me is Sunday. And you know that if he's out there, the ball is coming to him. So I just locked in, and I just I competed because if you don't compete with Antonio Brown, he's going to embarrass you. And he's going to rub it in your face. And I didn't feel like having a down practice that day because I didn't want to see him dancing with the stars. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to compete. It seemed at the end, though, you kind of rubbed it in his face a little bit, but you guys slapped hands. What's that camaraderie oh, been like between you brotherly two? Brotherly love, brotherly love. He's like, he's like that as, extra, that extra, when, you, when you're grilling, that, that extra fire barbecue pit, what you need to bring the juice to make it that 400 degrees. When he's out here, we on fire, man. We we need him. He's that he's that extra gas that you need in a science experiment that's gonna help get things boiling. That's what he do. When he's out here, everybody's on fire because we know if you're not on fire, then he's gonna set you on fire. So you have to be ready for Is this sure. The first time in your career that you've been exclusively slot. Oh um, no, with the Rams for three years, I was on um, exclusively slot. Well, well, I got reps with. I got reps at corner and safety, but it was mostly slot. Okay, well, I thought it was more, there was some more safety. Um, sure, the right? past two years, okay, the past okay. two years with Coach Okay. okay. One more, guys. There was a rep day session, I think, um, where it was, you and Burfecht had a little exchange. I couldn't tell who was saying, but somebody was just saying, talk to me. Um, how, how much are you guys emphasizing communication, and how big of a role is Burfecht playing in this, just knowing, you know, his how much he knows the defense and then being there? It's, it's, um, it's Burfecht trying to get the best out of me like like when you when you think about a guy like Gary on he's more a shell guy but now he's coming out the shell me I'm more lead by example but now I'm com communicating more so Burfitt is just trying to get me to do that communication every every down and distance so we can become that much faster as a defense so I have to do a better job and I appreciate the point that he's trying to you know squeeze that out of me